Hi there, I'm Jackie Hill and welcome you to video three in this three part video series on how to deal with cravings and urges to smoke. I hope that now you've had chance to view videos one and two and that you are implementing the suggestions that I've given you in those videos and that they are helping you in your efforts to minimise and deal with cravings to smoke. To recap briefly, in video one you'll find out how to identify triggers to smoking and how to deal with these triggers and in video two what to do with those automatic thoughts about smoking that bombard you once you've made that decision to quit. So if you haven't already done so make sure you put aside some time to watch them as I'm sure you'll find them really valuable. Now in today's video we will be looking at negative beliefs, these beliefs that underlie your smoking habit and limit you and can jeopardise your chance to success. And we'll be looking at what action you can take to disempower them. So without any further ado, let's go, let's get to it by first examining what exactly is a belief. Now, a belief is a thought that you've repeated over and over and over again. And in repeating a thought, you're embedding it deeper and deeper within your subconscious mind. For example, a belief that smoking is enjoyable may have come about when you first started smoking. Maybe you felt some pleasure in some way. Maybe it was because you were with peers and you felt part and a, of a group and a sense of belonging and that brought you happiness. So in some way, smoking is always associated and essential to your happiness and that has created that belief. Now it's likely that in quitting smoking, you will feel that you are making a sacrifice because you are depriving yourself of this pleasure, this mistaken belief that smoking brings you pleasure. So here are a few common beliefs that many smokers have about smoking. It's very hard to give up smoking. You'll suffer terribly when you stop. You will need tons of willpower to succeed. When you stop smoking, you feel terrible. And there is nothing you can do about this, but just suffer and hope it goes away. Very few people can successfully give up smoking and most people will eventually fail. Giving up smoking will be a terrible sacrifice. Life will never be the same again. You will never ever again be really able to enjoy your lunch breaks or social occasions. It is simply just not possible to give up smoking and enjoy it. Now the important thing about beliefs is to realise that they're all subjective. They come about through our life experience and what we are told by others. And the second most important thing to understand is that because of this, beliefs are not necessarily accurate. They're not actually true. Some of the beliefs we attain through life work well for us but unfortunately some of them actually work against us. In fact, they can be so dysfunctional and can even sabotage your attempts to achieve what you want from life. These problem beliefs arise at an early stage in our life usually and form a foundation on top of which we pile any other beliefs that are similar and build them up and consequently these beliefs are often from a distorted perspective of the truth. At that time though, such a strategy may have seemed appropriate as the circumstances surrounding it were difficult. However, in more cases than not, these beliefs are totally inappropriate for living and succeeding in the world as adults. Now the downside is that we rarely question beliefs and just accept them as the truth and unfortunately end up making decisions based on mistaken beliefs that end up limiting our growth. 
Now, when we come to smoking, I'd like you now just to write down a list of all the limiting beliefs that you have about smoking. And now, take each belief in turn and write down where it came from. Where did you learn it? Next, question this belief. Does it hold any truth for you now? Or is it ridiculous? Start to question that belief. Is there any truth in it for you now? Next, write down how this belief limits you. Where is the cost in your life? What are you going without? Where is the pain in this belief? Where is the pain in your life that this belief is causing you? And write that down. Consider now what you would rather believe in its place. When you've done this, write down a turnaround statement that supports your new belief. For example, a limiting belief might be, I can't cope under pressure, or I cave in under pressure. This belief limits you, for example, in resisting temptation to smoke. Third belief that you would rather had, maybe, would be, I can overcome pressure. If you look at it, it's very simple. And the turnaround statement would be, I can overcome the temptation to smoke. Now, can you see how this works? As I said, it's very simple. Often all you need to do, all that is necessary, is to change the wording in the belief. For example, if you've used the words, I am incapable of resisting temptation to smoke, you could change, I am incapable to, I am capable to resist the temptation to smoke. Perhaps you've used I am useless and you could change that I am useful and so on. It is that simple to come up with a turnaround statement. When you've done that just repeat out loud each turnaround statement to every belief you've written and notice how good that feels. Notice how that turnaround statement empowers you. It changes what you feel inside. And really get into the emotion and passion of it. Get excited and passionate about your turnaround statement. I can overcome the temptation to smoke. Now once you've done that, you can use these turnaround statements as a basis for daily affirmations which is the second part of what I'm going to share with you today. Now, first of all, a word or two about affirmations. Now, you've probably all heard about affirmations, and some of you may even be cynical about them. Maybe you've given them a go at some point and been disappointed because nothing has changed for you. Well, maybe you've even felt foolish saying them and gave up. There could be several reasons why you've not been successful and I'll explain why in a few moments. But if this resonates with you, I would urge you to seriously reconsider having another go because affirmations are an extremely powerful tool in changing belief patterns. First of all, let's make it quite clear right from the start that we are all using affirmations all of the time. Every day, each one of us says or thinks thousands of affirmations. For most people, they're doing it unconsciously and not realising the power that they hold. For example, every time you say you're not good enough or think you're not good enough or think you can't do something, you're saying an affirmation. So here are some negative affirmations used quite commonly by smokers without thinking. I'll never achieve quitting. 
it's too hard. I'm hopeless at quitting smoking. I've no willpower. What's the point in quitting? I'll only give in after a few days. I can't quit no matter how hard I try. I'll never quit because I enjoy smoking. The reason why many people don't feel like using affirmations is because they don't believe them. If we make positive affirmations, it feels strange and uncomfortable because we don't believe them. But that is the whole point. Otherwise, you wouldn't have to do it, would you? So, affirmations not only reinforce beliefs, so if you've got a negative affirmation like, oh, it's really hard quitting smoking, and you keep saying that to yourself, oh, I, 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 I've got no willpower. If you keep saying that to yourself or out loud, you are reinforcing that belief. But the flip side of that is affirmations also form beliefs as well. By applying the law of repetition. So remember, by repeating a thought, you are forming a belief. After all, that's how beliefs were formed in the first place. So let's move on to empowering positive beliefs. So here are seven golden rules to make positive affirmations to change your belief patterns. And it's important that you follow these through if you want your affirmations to be successful in changing your beliefs. Okay, number one, the 30 day rule. Now this comes from NASA experiments with astronauts. Scientists can now tell us that new neural patterns begin to form only after they've been repeated enough times. And the studies that they've done with astronauts show this to be around 30 days without a break. So maybe in the past you haven't kept your affirmations up for 30 days, which could explain why nothing changed. So the key here is that it is 30 days and it's without a break. So that means if you miss a day, then you have to go back to the beginning and start again for 30 days. This is really important. So after 30 days, you should expect some change. Number two, affirmations must be written in the present tense. And a good place to start here is with the words, I am. A powerful affirmation should describe what you want as if you already have it now, in the present moment. So always write down your affirmations in the present tense. In doing this, you're claiming the thing that you hope for in the now. Your subconscious mind will seek to correct this imbalance and therefore will set about bringing the inner change that you desire. Rule number three, your affirmation must be a positive statement. Positive affirmations challenge your negative beliefs and help stop the flow of negative thoughts and self-talk. This process increases your awareness of your thoughts and the words you use in everyday life, thereby giving you the chance to choose to think happy and positive thoughts, rather than letting your thoughts control you. So over time you'll find that you will start to think more positively naturally and the results you seek will emerge quicker in your life. For example, a positive affirmation could be, I have successfully quit smoking. I am now healthier, happier and relaxed. Rule number four, affirmations must have a feeling word in them. Choose at least one word that reflects the emotion of having achieved the goal. So by continuously repeating your affirmation with conviction and passion, you will not only chip away at even the strongest resistance, but you will also increase the power of your affirmation because passion makes it so much more effective. Remember, emotions are incredibly powerful. Rule number five is that you must have an action word in your affirmation. An action verb is a doing word. Examples of doing words are 
earning, living, having, achieving, enjoying and so on. By using an active action verb, you will be adding more power to your affirmation as you are creating an image of doing or achieving it in the present moment. Now, an easy way of remembering all that is just to add an ing to the end of a verb. So, say for example, I am enjoying my healthy lifestyle, which has more of the present moment than I enjoy my healthy lifestyle. Play around with some words and put more action words in your affirmation. Rule number six must be applied to you and not to others. This is where you're quitting smoking for you. We are not in the business of changing other people or doing things to please other people or controlling other people or making other people do things that they should do. This is all about you. So your affirmations must strictly apply to you and you only. Rule number seven, you'll keep your affirmations short and snappy. There is really no need to create long-winded affirmations. In fact, the shorter and sweeter the better, as you will want to remember them easily. The other reason is that if they are short and snappy, you are likely to say them more often. And if you can add a ring to them, that's even better. You could even sit in your affirmations, make them rhyme. Here's a challenge for you. Now in doing the exercises in today's video, you might feel that there are some beliefs that just feel impossible to shift. In which case, hypnosis is an excellent tool to help you, along with NLP. Now if you feel stuck or find it difficult to let go of smoking habits, and need help in disempowering those irrational beliefs and fears about quitting smoking. Or maybe you want to deal with those beliefs that smoking masks the other stuff that is going on in your life, that smoking is just a symptom of that. Then my I Quit Smoking program can help you. The program is available for you to download now a special introductory price of $47. It consists of a guidebook to help you through the program, a workbook with written exercises to help you unpack the reasons why you smoke, and 11 audio downloads, nine of which contain hypnosis and NLP techniques that target the deep-seated negative roots that cause you to continue to smoke, and focuses on the positive gains of stopping smoking. So if you want a copy of that, order it today and you'll also receive two bonus downloads. Now this offer is only going to be available at a special price of $47 for only a limited period of time. So make sure you don't miss out by ordering at this price today. Further details about this offer are available by clicking on the link below. I hope you enjoyed this video series and find it helpful in your journey of quitting smoking, please contact me by email or in the comment box below if I can be of any further help and check out the special offer I have running at the moment on the I Quit Smoking program. So I hope to hear from you soon.